Hello, uh, my name is Abby, and first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for listening to my presentation. Uh, to say the least, I am a massive theme park fan. Uh, my primary job is at Walt Disney World Resort in Florida, and I'm an annual pass holder at Universal Studios. I am so proud to see that theme parks and the greater entertainment industry are reaching out towards inclusivity for their deaf guests by adding things like language features to their accessibility options. Today, I'd like to look a little bit deeper into entertainment-based interpreters and their impact. As a frequent park guest, I've had the opportunity to make hundreds of visits and see countless live shows and performances across both Disney and Universal property. Some I've only seen once. Uh, for example, Joyful, A Celebration of the Season, is a concert series that happens during Epcot's Festival of the Holidays. Uh, during my visit in 2018, I got to see a lovely interpretation of Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror. Oh, To me, it's impossible to separate the interpreter from the live performer's art just because of the choreography and passion that goes into her interpreting. I've also experienced many of the same attractions multiple times over, sometimes to the point of knowing every beat of a show's script. Uh, this is why last month I was incredibly excited to see my favorite show be interpreted. Here, this interpreter is working with the horror character Beetlejuice. Oh, great! We got here! Terrific! We're trying to start the show here. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Now, can we get you anything? Pillow? Slippers. A watch. <laughs> in this next clip, I stumbled across the same interpreter accompanying a musical show in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Outside of the theme parks, ASL interpreters have a powerful impact on the music industry. Here, Chance the Rapper's interpreter Matt explains certain terms in ASL, and here interpreter Holly Maniotti performs Eminem's Rap God. <laughs> After a past of authoritative figures shutting down and, in the case of the World Delegates, outright banning the usage of sign language, it's amazing to see that ASL has been extended to not only vital communication, but to activities and events as well. In modern society, as technology has and will continue to advance at a rapid rate, physical and digital spaces are becoming much easier to access for thousands of groups of people. This includes the deaf community, creating great new methods of communication not only within the group, but also extending out to hearing individuals as well, uh, features of inclusivity that are very cool to see. By serving as a gateway in this regard, ASL allows for purely fun content, especially those that rely on audio, to be shared with a community that may otherwise be unable to hear it. This introduces media to the ongoing conversation so that deaf individuals may share their experience, provide feedback to the company in question, or possibly share it with other members of the deaf community. Laughing at jokes, interacting with performers, and forming bonds with other guests are all made possible with the assistance of just one translator. I find that a problem lies in just this, however. As of today, I've seen very few interpreters across any theme park property, and only the ones shown here at the entirety of Universal. I'm uncertain whether this is an effect of low demand for ASL services or a low supply of interpreters, but I think it's best to err on the side of caution with this one. Theme parks could do with an expanded catalog of accommodations. Currently, Universal's website states that services are only available by making advanced contact with the park, meaning that spontaneous visits, surprise trips, and spur-of-the-moment attraction experiences are much less accessible to guests with hearing needs. The addition of ASL interpreters to specific showtimes throughout the day listed online would allow the people that require them to make thorough same-day plans. Captioned queue line videos are a staple for many theme parks, but the attractions themselves are left without a transcript. Perhaps Universal could function along the same lines as Disney using a handheld captioning device to assist with moving attractions. Hearing Society has made many steps forward in terms of accommodating and interacting alongside the deaf community, which is great to see. The expanding education in the field of communication disorders has inspired countless individuals to pursue interpreting as a career, leading to the wonderful expansion of accessibility options to recreational theme park guests. Pushing for an even further exploration of the ways in which the hearing and deaf communities may enjoy the same things together is an endeavor that I am planning to keep my eye on. Thank you again for coming to my talk.